evening, everyone, and happy National Poetry Month. It's my favorite time of the year. Thank you for joining us tonight for this special event. And it is my pleasure to welcome all of you to our 15th annual International Poetry Reading. Tonight, you'll be hearing the world in over 23 languages. My name is Dr. Dorothy Chan, and I am an assistant professor in the English department specializing in creative writing and poetry. I am also the co-founder of Honey Literary Inc., which is a 501c3 arts organization and a BIPOC-focused literary journal founded and run by all women of color. Tonight's event means a lot to not only me, but the community, because it is not only National Poetry Month, but also because I believe that events like this highlight the beauty of all poetry, of all languages, of all cultures, of all rhythms and meters and time periods and in all images and in everything musical and artistic that makes poetry and literature beautiful. Poetry is important, especially in our world today. And how wonderful it is for an event like this to be hosted virtually at our own university. Before I go any further, I would first like to thank Mike Gerke of LTS, who has been a tremendous source of help throughout this entire process. Mike will be assisting us this evening with videos, recording, and managing this event. He is also one of our readers tonight, and I'm excited to hear him read uh, his translated poem in Japanese live tonight. We'll have a mixture of both live readings and pre-recorded readings this evening, and it's the age of Zoom after all, and so we're going to have a lot of fun with that. And as you take in these beautiful words and poetry tonight, uh, here are some tips on Zoom reading etiquette. If everyone could please mute themselves when they are not speaking, that would be wonderful. And in this webinar format, just so everyone is aware, you all of you in the audience can see us, but we can't see you. So show a little love to our readers in the chat. Quote some of your favorite lines, maybe even name some of your favorite poems and poets, anything really goes, but just show some love to our readers in the chat and that would be wonderful. Now I would like to take a minute to introduce the rest of our international poetry team. For the past few months, actually for the past year, I've had the pleasure of collaborating with Dr. Kai Shang Kong of Languages and Josh Bauer of LTS. It's been so wonderful working with these two brilliant and passionate individuals. Um, Dr. Kong, if you would like to unmute yourself for a second and introduce yourself or say a few words, that would be wonderful. Thank you, Dr. Chen, and good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for spending this wonderful weather, this wonderful day time with us. And my name is Kai Shang Kong. I'm an associate professor of Chinese in the languages department. I will make it short, as a language and culture educator, what I enjoy the most about this tradition, this event, is the chance to celebrate and embrace language and cultural diversity. It will not be successful without your support. And tonight we have readers from all over the world and I just look forward to that. I want to echo Dr. Chen to give a shout out to my two partners. You guys see the beautiful poster on my background and the beautiful digital poetry book. It was done by our talented, very talented Josh Bauer. And also um, it was a great experience working with my two partners. We got to utilize our expertise and strength to make this event successful. We hope you enjoy the rest of the evening. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Kong. Um, your students are truly lucky. Our community is truly lucky to have you here as a member. And uh, this event would not be able to run so successfully without your expertise and leadership for the past few months. So thank you so much. And Josh, would you like to unmute yourself and say a few words? Sure. Um, I am I'm Josh Bauer. I work um, in the learning and, learning and technology department as a web developer. Um, it's been great working with both um, Kaishan and Dorothy on this on this event. Um, I, I got, I've been involved since I was a student uh, at on campus, an English student. It's been great to, um, to to experience all of these languages and cultures that people have uh, contributed over the years. And I'm excited to um, to again um, participate and um, partake in this. Uh, celebration of culture and language tonight. So thank you all. 
Thank you, Josh. It's been a real pleasure working with you these past few months. And thank you again for creating uh, the beautiful packet, which our audience can follow along with tonight. Um, this packet, which we'll be putting into the chat in a minute, um, looks like this. It's the same as the background um, of Kaishan. And it includes uh, the poem in both the original language and translated into English so that all of you can follow along tonight and have a souvenir. Finally, this reading, the 15th Annual International Poetry Reading, is generously sponsored and would not be possible without Dr. Thomas W. and Deborah R. King, uh, the Center of International Education, the University of Wisconsin-Eau Claire Foundation, and the Departments of English and Languages. Kai Shan, Josh, and I would also like to thank our Chancellor, Chancellor James Smith, uh, Dr. Blake Westerland of the English Department, English Fest, Lee Chappell, Mike Gerke, and LTS Video, Gary Johnson and IMC, Rosa Gomez and The Spectator, Audrey Fessler, Jeff uh, Val Bush, Kelly Beers, and Katie Vagnino. Finally, thank you to all our readers. Thank you so much for sharing these beautiful poems. We're very excited to either hear you live tonight or in a pre-recorded video. We're extremely excited. And thank you so much to our audience for joining us tonight. We hope that you are all doing well and taking care, especially as the semester winds down and we enter into a wild summer, hopefully. I'm happy that we can share this beautiful space tonight. Uh, now we will hear a few words from our chancellor who has kindly provided us with a few pre-recorded remarks. Welcome to the 15th Annual International Poetry Reading Evening. It feels so good to return to this wonderful tradition, even if we must do so on our phones, screens, computers. While we had to cancel last year's evening when our campus closed, we weren't about to let that happen again. So here we are, a year later, connecting virtually. If you're like me, you're probably a bit tired of living and socializing on Zoom and Facebook. You miss the wonderful in-person events that made our university so vibrant. The concerts and lectures, the theater performances and athletic competitions. We long to take a deep breath without a mask on sit with a friend and enjoy the arts and culture that are such an important part of the Blue Gold experience. Tonight, I invite you to take that deep breath where you are, close your eyes, and focus on poetry. Focus on the words that describe our world, express life, declare love, in languages spoken near and far. Focus on words that were written hundreds of years ago or just yesterday. Listen, breathe, and learn from this evening of poetic discovery. Before we get started, I want to thank all the Blue Golds who have volunteered to read tonight. In particular, I want to recognize Dr. Kei Shing Kong, Dr. Dorothy Kang Yang Chen, and Josh Bauer, who have been the guiding force behind tonight's event. They follow in the footsteps of two dear friends, Dr. Jeff Valbush and Dr. Audrey Fessler, who created this special evening with the campus community in mind. What a tribute to them that this continues to occur. Finally, I'd like to thank Professor Emeritus, Dr. Thomas King and his wife, Deborah, who sponsored tonight's event, along with the UW-Eau Claire Foundation, the Center for International Education, and our English and language departments at UW-Eau Claire. So many people have come together to make this night possible, and I hope you enjoy the fruits of their labor. I'm only fluent in English language, so bear with me as I share a short poem from one of my favorite poets, Robert Frost. I think this is appropriate tonight as we look forward to the spring. A Prayer in Spring by Robert Frost. Oh, give us the pleasure and the flowers today and give us not to think so far away as the uncertain harvest keeps us here all simply in the springing of the year. Let's focus on the here tonight, on the simple poetic words that'll transport us around the world, on all of the wonderful possibilities still to come 
in the springing of the year. Thank you for joining us tonight for this wonderful UW-Eau Claire tradition. I look forward to hearing and experiencing the language and the beauty of poetry with you. And many thanks again to our chancellor for those pre-recorded remarks. I found the Frost poem at the end to be very beautiful and inspiring and a happy belated birthday to Robert Frost. Before we get to our readings for tonight, um, I decided last minute that I'm going to read one of my own poems in English. It is about my Chinese heritage. This is one of my own titled Triple Sonnet for Black Hair in a Poetry Magazine. Triple Sonnet for Black Hair. My mother warns me not to blow dry my hair too hard, turning it from black to rust, and I must wear my black hair proudly. Black, the color of clothing my grandmother hates because young women should always wear red or pink, the colors of luck and youth. Black, the color of wedding dress the reality TV starlet circa 2006 wants, but she knows walking down the aisle in black will break her mother's heart. In fact, Red is the color of wedding dresses in Chinese culture. Even if the bride wears white for the ceremony, she'll change into red for the dinner. And hello, 10 course meal of my dreams that starts with a meat platter of roasted pork and how guests go crazy for the abalone and swallows nest soup with crab meat. And of course there's a chicken, a pig, a fish, a duck and a lobster roll call. In fact, at Chinese funerals, relatives of the deceased don't wear black but white. In fact, eight's the lucky Chinese number, not seven. And at dim sum, my grandmother makes sure she orders eight dishes, not seven, but nine's all right too. Eight like the number of legs on a spider, a spider black like my hair that my mother warns me not to blow dry too hard, turning it into rust. And I remember my sixth grade science experiment of lighting a cigarette, watching how the smoke changed the spider's web spinning. And black because it's hypnotic, like little Little black dresses on gorgeous women or how I prefer lingerie and black over white, but red is probably the best and owe to sexiness and owe to the color of my culture and history. And I want to feel like a million dollars be a million dollars. In black, the color of my late dog Buzzy, a Sky Terrier, twice as long as he was low. My mother once joking said he looked like a giant rat or a licorice bunny, or a furry snake, or a dragon in some iterations of love, majestic in dreams, and oh, how I miss him after these dream visits. Black, the color of my wet hair in the morning. And now, it is my pleasure to introduce our first reader of tonight. If you'd like to follow along in your packets, our first reader of tonight is Elio Yang, uh, who will be reading a poem in Mandarin Chinese with her daughter, Jane Ma. And this is a poem titled Little Brother and His Kitten, translated by Chris Ma. And Yang is the Chinese program manager at the Center for International Education. Take it away. And thank you so much for reading uh, for us tonight, Elio. Hi everyone, it's a great honor for me and Jane to read a Chinese poem tonight. It's a poem for children, so have fun. <laughs> 小弟和小猫,我家有个小弟弟,聪明又淘气。每天爬高又爬低,满头满脸都是你。妈妈叫他来洗澡,装没听见他就跑。爸爸妈镜子把他照他闭上眼睛咯咯的笑姐姐听见哈哈笑,爸爸妈妈皱眉毛。小弟听我真害笑,妈妈笑,妈妈说我不干净,请您快给我洗个澡。Thank you for listening. Thank you so much to both of you for starting off our event. And everyone, please show love to our readers in the chat. We love hearing poems um, by families, and that was very, very beautiful. And again, let's show love to our readers in the chat tonight. So um, next up 
is uh, Gustavo Barajano Lopez, who will be reading live with us tonight, a poem in Spanish. And uh, Gustavo is a wonderful poet and he is also new to the Eau Claire community. So please welcome him. Um, hi everyone. Um, and thank you, um, uh, Dr. Chan for that introduction. Really appreciate it. Um, so I'm gonna read um, La Reina by Pablo Neruda. Yo te he nombrado reina. Hay más altas que tú, más altas. Hay más puras que tú, más puras. Hay más bellas que tú, hay más bellas. Pero tú eres la reina. Cuando vas por las calles, nadie te reconoce. Nadie ve tu corona de cristal. Nadie mira la alfombra de oro rojo que pisas cuando pasas, la alfombra que no existe. Y cuando asomas, suenan todos los ríos en mi cuerpo, sacuden el cielo las campanas, y un himno llena el mundo. Solo tú y yo, solo tú y yo, amor mío, lo escuchamos. Thank you so much, Gustavo. You have a very, very beautiful reading voice. It's a pleasure to hear you read tonight. Uh, next up is Mike Gerke, uh, who will be reading a poem uh, in Japanese. So take it away, Mike. Thanks, Dr. Chan. Um, yeah, I, uh, I chose this poem because um, a few years ago, I was fortunate enough to uh, get accepted into the JET program to teach English in Japan. Um, and my wife and I actually lived in uh, the town of Shirakawa in Fukushima Prefecture. Um, and this poem is um, written by uh, Matsuo Basho um, about 300 years ago um, about that town. Um, and it's really, uh, I thought it was kind of amazing that it, you can really see the same similarities that he talks about in the poem uh, in the town today. So here it goes. Kokoro, Motonaki hi, Kazu, Kasunaru, Mama ni, Shirakawa no seki ni, Kakari te, Tabi gokoro, Sabari nu, Ika de Miyako e to, Tayori, Moto meshi, Kotowaru nari, Nakani mo, Kono seki wa, Sankan no ichi ni shite, Fuso no hito gokoro o, Todomu Akikaze o Mimi ni noko shi Momiji o Omokage ni shite Aoba no kozue Nao ahare nari Uno hana no Shirotai ni Ibara no hana no Saki so hite Yuki ni mo Koyuru Kokuchi Zosuru Kojin Kamuri o Tadashi Isho Aratameshi Kotonado Kyosuke no Fude ni mo Todome Okureshi Tezo Tezo Unohana o Kazashi ni Seki no Harigi kana Sora Thank you. Thank you, Mike. That was a gorgeous reading and it's a gorgeous high boon. Always love to hear that uh, form live as well. So thank you so much. Um, next up, it is my pleasure to introduce our next reader, Charles Sivu, who will be reading a poem to us in Hmong tonight. And uh, Charles um, is the Associate Director of the Office of Multicultural Affairs here at UW-Eau Claire. Charles, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Thank you for this opportunity to share my poem. The poem is inspired by a uh, author out in California, uh, Dr. Ngo Li Ya. I like to read this poem, hoping that others who learn how to read and write Hmong can be inspired to do the same. And the title of that is Two uh, Peaches. So here we go. 
กุยวะตอออลูจีดัวนออีลูลาจีอีลูเจกุตูลูญอเดกุซงเชียลอตอนึยะกุนอนึนึยวะจียากุตูลูญอตัวตะชินึยวะไชปลากุยอตูเชีย
Pelėsiais ir kerpia apaugus aukštai, trakų užtai garbinga pilis. Jos aukštus valdovus užmygdė kapai, o ji tebe stovi dar vis. Bet amžiai bėga ir griuvančios sienos, kasdieną nyksta, apleistos ir vienos. Kai vėjas pakyla ir drumžias vanduo, ir ežeras verčias platinų. Banga, gena banga ir bokšto akmo, paplautas nuvirsta žemyn. Kaip griuva sienos liūdnesnės kasdieną, griaudindamos jautrę širdinę vieną. Pilis, tu tiek amžių praleidai garsiai ir tiek mums davėjai milžinų, tu Vytauto didžio garbę matai, kad jojo tarp savo pulkų, kur tavo gale garsi palikimais, kur ta senovė brangi atminimais, nutilusio sienos apleistos visų, be sargo, vinklų, be žmogaus. Kiek priminat jūs man brangiausių laikų ant vieškilio amžiaus platos? Vaikai brangiausi, ar mums dar sugrįšite? Ar vien minėsime kaip savo jaunystę? Kada tik keliu važiavau pro trakus, man verkia iš skausmo širdis. Gaili aš rėlė be plovės krostus ir mėlyną stemdė akis ir veltui dvasiarą mintį norėjau, aplinkui vien tamsią naktį regėjau. Thank you. Sorry, it's really beautiful to see the castle um, in the poem come alive as we're watching uh, the movie provided by Dalla. So thank you so much to Dalla. The next poem um, is, will be performed by Joshua Stringer, a poem in American Sign Language. And thank you so much to Mike for helping us uh, play those videos. I know that this isn't necessarily easy to organize, so it's really much appreciated. The next poem uh, will be read by Karel uh, Jolan, uh, a poem in Estonian. Vajus <laughs> Luitte liivade liostes tuli sinine mere tuul ja ütles mulle, tõeline armastus on olemas, tema ongi päike tumeruheliste mändide kohal, sinu kujuteldav hing on olemas. Tema ongi läbipaistvate tiibade ja kärbes hele rohelisel männi kasvul. Aga su süda on vaigupisar, mis saja tuhande aasta eest nõrgus, tohutus laanes, tohutus tüvest. Vaigupisar, mille laskus, läbipaistvate tiibade ja kärbes, millele ta kinni jäi ja milles seda mattus, nagu kollasest klaasist kirstu. Tohutu laanega koos vajus see merre ja sai merevaiguks. Kuni mina, sinine mere tuul, täna hommikul puhusin selle kalda liivale päikese kätte. Nüüd värisevad kärbse läbipaistvad tiivad päikese käes, hele rohelisel männi kasvul. And many thank yous to Karel. We'll now move on to a series of live readings. Our next reader, uh, Madeline McKay, will be reading a poem to us in French. So take away, Madeline. Hello, everyone. I will be reading uh, Océan de Terre by World War I poet Guillaume Apollinaire. J'ai bâti une maison au milieu de l'océan. Ses fenêtres sont les fleuves qui s'écoulent de mes yeux. Des poules crient partout où se tiennent les murailles. 
entendait battre le triple cœur et le bec cogné aux vitres. Mes ennemis, humides, mes ailes ardentes, ces ans rapides, ces ans qui chantent. Les avions pendent des heures. Attention, on va jeter l'encre. Attention à l'encre que l'on jette. Il serait bon que vous venissiez du ciel. Le chevre faille du ciel crampe. Les poupes te restent papites. Et puis, nous sommes tant et tant à être nos propres euh, fossoyeurs. Pâle poupe des vagues creuses ou poupe au bec pâle. Autour de la maison, il y a cet océan que tu connais et qui ne se repose jamais. Thank you. Thank you so much, Madeline. I'm especially obsessed with the last two lines, um, the metaphor about the ocean. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. It's my pleasure to now introduce our next reader, Professor Emeritus of History, Jim Oberly, who will be reading a poem to us in Hungarian tonight. Thank you, Professor Chan. Hungarian is a language spoken in several countries in Europe, in Hungary, in Romania, in Slovakia, Serbia, and Ukraine, but it's a language from Central Asia, what today is Kazakhstan. So it's not a European language. I have been studying it for about a dozen years. I'm humbled to think of my great grandmother who could speak Hungarian, Yiddish, German, Slovak, and English. I'm closer to the chancellor in my <laughs> linguistic. But anyway, I'll be reading a poem by the uh, Miklos Radnoti. And um, the title is the English translation, the seventh eclogue. If you don't recognize the word eclogue, it means pastoral or bucolic poetry. And this is a bitter irony because Miklos Radnoti was a prisoner in a concentration camp, a slave labor camp, writing at night after 12 hours of work. And it was meant to be read la chon, la chon, slowly in Hungarian. And it would take me too long to read all of it. So I'll just read the first and maybe second and last stanzas because out of respect to the other readers tonight so we can hear them. Hetedik ekloga, la tode estedik suges dotal beseget vod, tulji keretes bara olia lebegu Felsiva az este, rabshagunk keretet, elresti a lashu tekintet. És csak az ez, csak az ez, az tudja a drót, fez, fezüleset, látod -e, drága, a képzelet itt, az is így szabadul csak. Megtöretet testünket az alom, a szép szabító. Oldja fel, és a fogolja tábor hazindul ilyenkor. Rancsosan és kopaszon hokorlá répülnek a foglók. Szerbia vag, tételre ról, buvó otthoni tajra. Buvó otthoni taj? Ó, megvan -e még az az otthon? Bomba sem erte talon, svan mint amikor bevon ultunk. És aki jobbra nyolszó sürg, aki balra héder hazatére. Mond van-e ott haza még, ahol értik e hexametet is. And the last stanza. Azik a tábor, látod -e, drága, suhognát az almok. Horkán a felriadó, megfordul a suk helyen és már. Udra elaszik, el fenlik az arca, csak én ülök ébren. Felig szít, szigarettat, erzik, zerzek a számban a csokon. Íze helyet és nem jön az állam az én hédató mert. Nem tudok én megállni se, élni se nélküled imár. Thank you. Professor Emeritus of History. 
Professor Oberly, thank you so much for reading that important poem to us. It's a gorgeous poem, a gorgeous reading, and especially obsessed with the last two lines, the images of the mouth, the love, and the kiss. So thank you again, and thank you for prefacing it with some very useful information and history. It's my pleasure to now introduce our next reader, St. Clair Tomaszek. They will be reading a poem live in Esperanto to us. Thank you so much. Hello, Don Chiwi. Hello, everyone. Um, thank you for the introduction, Dr. Chan. Um, I'm going to be reading a poem in Esperanto today. Esperanto uh, is a, a language that was created by a Polish and Jewish scholar named Dr. Zamenhof in the late 1800s. It was developed to um, further international and interlingual communication because Dr. Zamenhof believed that um, a lack of communication was a great cause of most conflicts and wars. So um, it's a language with a, a mission of peace and a mission of community. Um, and to sort of explain that mission, Dr. Zamenhof wrote the poem I'm going to read called La Espero. Um, La Espero has been put to music and that song is widely regarded as a, a hymn or an anthem of Esperanto. It's commonly sung Um, at Congress's and gatherings today. Um, I will not be singing, but I will be reading it for you today. So here is La Espero. En la mondo venis nova sento. Tra la mondo iras forta voco. Per flugiloi de facila vento. Nun de loco flugu gi al loco. Ne al glavo sangon soy fanta. Gi la homan tiras familion. A la monde terne militante. Ci promesas sanctan harmonion. Sub la sancta signo de l'espero colectigas pazzai batalantoi, cae rapide crescas la affero per laboro de la esperantoi. Forte staras muroi de miliaroi inter la popoloi dividitai, sed di santos la obstinae baroi per la sancta amo dispatitoi. Sur neutrala lingua fundamento, comprenante unu la alian, la popolo e faros, en consento, unu grandan rondon familian. Nia dirigenta collegaro, en laboro pazza ne razzigios, gis la bella sonjo del homaro, por eterna ben ne effectivigios. Thank you and thank you. Thank you so much, Sinclair, and bravo. And thank you for uh, sharing that useful information, that important information uh, with us, prefacing the poem. Really happy to hear you read tonight. And so next up, we have two videos. So we're gonna watch a series of videos now. The next two are by Thomas King. The first is in Icelandic. And Thomas King has been a wonderful supporter of this program for several years now. Auf Wadi Lichter Läden, auf Wadi Lichter Läden, Liefs auf Lotet en Drota Hauer Baka Quäcker, ha für mir Kinder Filka, ich für etum als Kliva o Fardau, es gut Lofar, Drogum e Par a Duga, o Dengem os i Strengen. And the next video, um, also by Thomas King. Uh, will be a poem in Michif. Thank you again, Thomas, for all your support. Nakwachi ke taak, sa praan e en shmenchi uushi teaak, daan li boaa, ki ish kataha li i suul, ta ko upita to un. Kowale a ukata, ki i nakwato, e en leev maaka, ki pa ash kipitum li kowale, pa kam mitipu li leev ki ishpin ki yapit pimatishu, pu koun li leav pi uta a ashta li puel, no ute kataan, mi ishuta ak, tikisha la gres, shashisha wikishin. 
two very beautiful poems and videos by Thomas tonight. Also nice to see um, the nature in the background as he's reading. Next up, uh, Jessica Lim will be reading a poem to us titled and translated to Hard Work in Malay. Hi everyone. Um, I'm gonna read a Malay poem today. Um, Puisi Melayu. The name of it is Kriju Kuras, which means hardworking. So, aku pulang dengan penuh lelah. Tatapan yang tak ada makna. Keringat yang bercucuran di wajah. Dengan satu harapan hanya ingin mencari berkah. Berkah yang didapatkan dari suatu kerja keras. Di mana kerja keras ini memang harus kulakukan. Semata-mata demi keluarga yang jauh di sana. Dan semoga semua perjuangan ini takkan sia-sia. Walaupun diri ini seringkali kehujanan. Walaupun diri ini sering kali tertekan, tetapi aku tak takut akan semua keadaan. Kerana di dalam doaku kepada Tuhan, diriku selalu meminta agar dimudahkan semua persoalan. Kelak kerja keras yang kulakukan dapat membuahkan hasil yang memuaskan. Agar diriku selalu bisa memberi kebahagiaan dan menuntut masa depan dengan penuh keberhasilan. Terima kasih. Thank you. Thank you to Jessica for that beautiful reading of hard work. The next video is very, very cute. Samuel, our next reader, will be reading a poem to us in Finnish and Samuel is only nine years old. So it's great to see a wide range of demographics in this reading. Sakatieltä perunaa pohti kaupassa kerran. Pääsemmekö kattilaan ja suuhun hienon herran? Tai ehkäpä me pääsemme isoäidin pataan tai opettajan avuksi, kun luokka laskee sataan. Paras, jos pääsemme lasten lauta sille, meidän, täyt meidän täytyy täysin vatsa antaa nälkää sille. And bravo to one of our youngest readers tonight. Thank you, Samuel. Uh, we'll have the, now um, two live readings. Our next reader joining us, uh, I believe from Latvia, Madara Smelka will be reading a poem to us. Madara, thank you so much for joining us. I know it's very late there or perhaps very, very early. So we appreciate you joining us and welcome. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Uh, so I will read the poem by Madara Zali. And uh, here it goes. Es neesmu burve, es tikai mācos. Man tā vēl īsti nobūt nav nācies. Bet naktīs, kad skumjas kā pūces smejas, man gribas, lai nātras kļūst orhidejas. Un rītos, kad gaisma kā pelēta seja, man gribas, lai akmeņi aizpūko vējā. Un dienās, kad mākoņi nēsā dzēju, man gribas, lai debesis papīrā lejas. Bet vakaros tauriņus grobstām garām, kad ugunī iekšā dejo. Es dzirdu, jā, skumjas atkal, kā pūces smejas. Es neesmu burve, es tikko mācīties sāk. Tik daudz es gribētu nobūt. Man neiznāk. Thank you so much, Madara. Thank you again for joining us. It's a very, very bewitching poem. It's a very fun poem as well. Our next reader is Douglas E. Kidd, who will be reading to us in Maltese tonight. Douglas, thank you for joining us. Greetings from Toledo. Um, I think my poem needs a little context. 19 days from today, May 17, 2005, I celebrate the beginning of my 17th year of recovery from an auto accident that occurred near the shores of Lake Erie in Ohio. I experienced coma and amnesia for more than 10 weeks following the accident. The poem developed more than a year ago. The poem pro provides a snapshot 
of my functioning for many weeks, but like many life-changing events, has implications to the present. I chose Maltese three years ago, May 2018. I had a tremendous response from scholars and activists. At an, in an, it was a Euro, uh, I'd forgotten the name of the conference, but it was a, a, a University of Malta facilitated. It's a Euro Mediterranean conference on uh, inclusion, disability. I'm sorry, I didn't remember the name of it. So out of tribute to the faculty there, I'm attempting this in Maltese. And okay, so here it goes. Uh, uh, well, you can read the English translation. Sorry. Mit Luf is centrant led fe labyrinth in Lindur um sieb ed mod min go fe. Jupara mahad congisoni in du akta maj. Sakem lakem mil sakem ne hakem miloli. Hitan ka kishi the. I've read that a number of times, but I can't even get close to it. So uh, I'll move on. Le jouet in in dawa mit templar tolarfen. Imjili nerga nibli. Bo in in Jiraf. Jamila Defici Defici the Tikber Abilita. Il Fuqua Il Bara Makbud in in Felel in Sakar Gewa Maluk Koma Il Tixoma Kolosh Imwur. Im were were me mes profunda the incentive in and the two uh im rema to tash sozeta uh il haj uh in fits at instabilities uh jewa ir uh uh I can't even get that one, I'm sorry, everyone. Um uh KO Tiku le imber te confusioni in Mahalef fil kaba in processor tal nivel ola me mejgat be zom imar jaba tigrafna di mo be mo fragili uh uh folk irreality uh lives terraforma identita uh in uthej uh il uh jit will be jirga jim had mal humanita Thank you so much for reading to us tonight, Douglas. We're very grateful for your work and that's a very important poem as well. So thank you again. And this reading is really reminding me that a translation and the study of translation in literature, in languages is very important. And I think there's much beauty in the amount of literature and languages that are being shared tonight. So again, very grateful to all our readers for sharing with us. Next up, we'll be watching um, a video uh, of a Cantonese poem reading by Carrie Z.
你，是四月早天里的云烟。黄昏吹着风的远，星子在无意中闪，细雨点洒在花前。那轻，那娉婷，你是鲜艳百花的冠冕，你带着；你是天真庄严，你是夜夜的血缘。雪化后那片鹅黄，你像新鲜初放芽的绿，你是。柔软、喜悦，水光浮动着你，梦期待中百年。你是一树一树的花开，是燕在梁间呢喃。你是爱，是暖，是希望。你。是人间的四月天。Thank you so much to Carrie. You truly are the spring of this world. Our next reading、uh, is by Karina Jamarka, who will be reading a poem to us in Russian, which is translated to "Winter Spite is Vain" in English. And thank you again, Mike, for managing the videos tonight. Fyodor Ivanovich Tsuchev, "Zima Nidaram Zlitsa." Зима недаром злится, прошла ее пора. Весна в окно стучится и гонит со двора. И все засуетилось, все нудит зиму. Вон и жаворонки в небе уж подняли трезвон. Зима еще хлопочет и на весну ворчит. Та ей в глазах охочет и пуще лишь шумит. Взбесилась ведьма злая и снегу захватя, пустила убегая в прекрасное дитя. В сне и горя мало, умылась в снегу и лишь румяней стала на перекор врагу. Спасибо, Сесия. A really beautiful reading. Thank you again to our readers. The next poem、um, is in Dutch. It is a pre-recorded performance by Mink Hutton van Shelven. Thank you, Mink. En een nieuw geluid. Ik wil dat dit lied klinkt als het gefluit dat ik vaak hoorde voor een zomernacht in een oud stadje langs de watergracht. In huis was het donker, maar de stille straat vergaarde schemer aan de lucht blonk laat. Nog licht er viel een gouden blanke schijn over de gevels in mijn raamkozijn. Dan blies een jongen als een orgelpijp de klanken schudden in de lucht zo rijp als jonge kersen wen een lentewind. In het bosje opgaat en zijn reis begint. Daar werd alles zwijgend en een gele boot kroop uit de nevel en daarin school rood. Vooraan en voor het linnen zeil een kind. Wee, wee mij, nu mijn hart mij overwint en mijn stem stom slaat nu dit nieuwste woord geboren werd. Daarop verscheen midden in het sneeuwijs van blakend stof en rots blankrood lichaam van een jong god. Zijn voeten liepen saam, vooruit om beurten, om zijn hooghoofd woei, het bosse gaar met zonkvonken gesproei. Hij lag om nek en hals in keten waard, van goud. Zijn neus blies adem als een paard. Henen is, heugen is, van lust en droefheid die ik immer droeg. Over is, laven is, drank van muziek, altijd en nooit genoeg. 
Gij zijt geheel in mij en ik behoorde. U al zo lang, ik weet niet meer wat is. Uw of mijn leven, uw gelijkenis. Ben ik, gij mijn, wordt nu een kind geboren, uit u en mij. Dat zal ons toebehoren, gelijkelijk, omdat wij beiden zijn. Elkanders liefde waard, ik uw, gij mijn. I really love hearing all those distinct tones um, in Dutch. It's a very stunning poem in parts. Thank you, Mink, for joining us. Our next reader is Pat Hartman, who will be reading a poem to us in German, translated to, fittingly, a little song in English. Ein kleines Lied. Ein kleines Lied, die geht nur an. Das man so lieb es haben kann. Was liegt darin, erzähle. Es liegt darin ein wenig Klang, ein wenig Wohlaut und Gesang und eine ganze Seele. Thank you, Pat. A really lovely reading and a lovely close-up to nature at the end. Our next reader is Elena Mityushina, reading a poem to us uh, translated from Russian. Uh, translated, um, this poem is about silence and not speaking. Fyodor Tchuchev, Silentium. Malchi. Скрывайся и таи, и чувства, и мечты свои, пускай в душевной глубине встают и заходят они, безмолвно, как звезды в ночи, любуйся ими и молчи. Как сердцу высказать себя, другому как понять тебя? Поймет ли он, чем ты живешь? Мысль зреченная есть ложь. Взрывая, возмутишь ключи, питайся ими и молчи. Лишь жить в себе самом умей. Есть целый мир в душе твоей, таинственно волшебных дум. Их оглушит наружный шум. Дневные разгонят лучи. Внимай их пенью и молчи. That was a very lovely reading, Elena. And Russian is such a beautiful language, so important to literature as well. Our next reader is Frank Fusil, who will be reading a poem to us um, in French and translated Ilia to It's There. Ilia. Il y a un vaisseau qui a emporté ma bien-aimée. Il y a dans le ciel six saucisses et la nuit venant, on dirait des asticots dont naîtraient les étoiles. Il y a un sous-marin ennemi qui en voulait à mon amour. Il y a mille petits sapins brisés par les éclats d'obus autour de moi. Il y a un fantassin qui passe aveuglé par les gaz asphyxiants. Il y a que nous avons tout taché dans les boyaux de Nietzsche, de Goethe et de Cologne. Il y a que je languis après une lettre qui tarde. Il y a dans mon porte-carte Plusieurs photos de mon amour. Il y a les prisonniers qui passent la mine inquiète. Il y a une batterie dont les sauvants s'agitent autour des pièces. Il y a le vague maître qui arrive au trot par le chemin de l'arbre isolé. Il y a, dit-on, un espion qui rôde par ici 
invisible comme l'horizon dont il s'est indignement revêtu et avec quoi il se confonde. Il y a dressé comme un lit le buste de mon amour. Il y a un capitaine qui attend avec anxiété les communications de la TSF sur l'Atlantique. Il y a à minuit des soldats qui scient des planches pour les circuits. Il y a les femmes qui demandent du maïs à grands cris devant un Christ sanglant à Mexico. Il y a le Gulf Stream qui est si tiède et si bienfaisant. Il y a un cimetière plein de croix à cinq kilomètres. Il y a des croix partout de ci, de là. Il y a des figues de barbarie sur ces cactus en Algérie. Il y a les longues mains souples de mon amour. Il y a un encrier que j'avais fait dans une fusée de 15 cm et qu'on n'a pas laissé partir. Il y a ma selle exposée à la pluie. Il y a les fleuves qui ne remontent pas leur cours. Il y a l'amour qui m'entraîne avec douceur. Il y avait un prisonnier Bosch qui portait sa mitrailleuse sur son dos. Il y a des hommes dans le monde qui n'ont jamais été à la guerre. Il y a des hindous qui regardent avec étonnement les campagnes occidentales. Ils pensent avec mélancolie à ceux dont ils se demandent s'ils les revront, car on a poussé très loin d'eau cette guerre, l'art de l'invisibilité. Thank you so much to my colleague Frank for that beautiful reading. And everyone, if you haven't had a chance to look at that poem on the page, I highly encourage you to because of the way it takes up space on the page along with the very striking anaphora use in the there are or theirs in the poem. Our next reader is uh, Flossie Chris Johnson who will be reading a poem to us in Icelandic translated to English as Journey's End. Ástar stjörnu yfir hrundranga skila nætur ský. Hló hún á himni hryggur þráir sveinn í djúpum dali. Veit ég hvar von öll og verold mín glætt er Guðs loga, hlekki brýt ég hugar og heilum mér fleigi fannþinn í. Sökkveg mér og sé ég í sálu þér og lífi þínu lífi. Andartak sérkvert sem andir Guð finn ég í heitu hjarta. Tindum við á fjalli tvö vorum saman blóm í hárri hlýð. Knýtti ég kerfi og í kjöltu þér lagði ljúfar gjarir. Hlóðstu mér að höfði hringum ilmandi bjartra blágrasa, einn af öðrum og að öllu dáðist og grifst þá aftur af. Hlóum við á heiði, himin glaðnaði fagur á fjallabrún, alls yndi þóttu mér ekki vera utan voru lífi lifa. Grétu þá í lautu góðir blóm álfar, skilnað 
okkar skildu. Dögg það við hugðum og dropa kalda, kistum úr krossgrasi. Hjælt ég þér á hesti í hörðum straumi og fann til fullnustu. Blóng knapp þann gæti ég borið og varið öll yfir æfiskið. Greitt ég þér lokkaði galtará vel og vandlega. Brosa blóm varir, blika sjónstjörnur, ródunar heitur hlýr. Fjær er nú fagur fylgtinni sveinn í djúpum dali. Ástar stjarna yfir hrauindranga skín á bakvi ský. Háa skilur netti heimin geimur, blað skilur bakka og egg, en anda sem unnast fær aldregi eilífð að skilið. A very passionate poem. Many thanks again to Flossi for reading to us tonight. Our next reader is Daniela Fernandez Galino, who will be reading to us in Spanish, a poem that she also translated herself, uh, titled The Venezuela That I Like. La Venezuela que me gusta. La Venezuela que me gusta es gentil, noble, abundante. La Venezuela que me gusta está rodeada de inmensos mares. Y dentro de ellos hay grandes riquezas. La Venezuela que me gusta tiene un agradable clima, hermoso amanecer y grandioso atardecer, de los cuales me gusta ser testigo. La Venezuela que me gusta es hermosa por esto y más. Reconozco que me gusta ser venezolana. Y a ti, que te gusta Venezuela, escrito por Ana María G. Thank you again, Daniela, for that beautiful reading. We just have a few more readers tonight. Again, Kaishan, Josh, Mike, and myself are very happy that you've all been able to join us this evening. Next up is Courtney King, who will be reading to us in Japanese. Translated to English, the poem's title is The Eternity 400 Poem Sequences. Hello, my name is Courtney King, and I'll be reading 71, 72, and 77 from the poem collection Eikyu Hayakushi. 71. Hira yuki to miu bakari sake, yamazakura zaraba irihini, makashi oseji. 72. Haruku to nobe no kasumi ni tsumarite hanane mai no kuchibiru mo mizu. 77. Hana to mi te tazuni ki tsureba, zushi no yama hito bakari haru mine no shira kumo. Thank you again, Courtney, for that inspiring reading. Love a poem in several parts. Next up, we have a poem in Thai, read by Yuan Yun Li. สวัสดีค่ะดิฉันชื่อหลีเหยือนเหยือนเป็นผู้สอนวิชาภาษาไทยของมหาวิทยาลัยคลุสะลิงนั้นยินดีที่ได้มีโอกาสได้นำบทกวีภาษาไทยมาเข้าร่วมกิจการค่ะนั่นแหละคลายเคยเห็นเจ้าชายสายลงบ้างไม่มีทางที่จะนึกจะเห็นสมเมื่อพลิกษาน้อมเสียนลมบังคมนั่นแหละเจ้าสายลมได้ผ่านไปความรักเป็นอย่างไรใครรู้บ้างเจ้าเคว้นคว้างจอระดอนอยู่หนไหนเมื่อดาวเย้มเดือนยิ้มพริมลำใายให้กันนั่นแหละรักเคยคำนวณน้ำหนักน้ำตาไหมเมื่อหัวใจเจ็บปวดต้องจงปรับเสนสมุด
อาสงขายทลายทละนั่นแหละคือน้ำหนักความปวดร้าวจากยอดย่าตรอดยบพระเจดีจากทุกลีถึงห่วงเวหาเหาจากแผ่นดินเลยล่วงถึงดวงดาววับวับวาวจากกลับวันนั่นแหละกวีผู้เขียนบทกวีนาวัตละพงภายบุญขอบคุณค่ะ Another stunning reading and performance this evening. As we know, love is such a central theme in literature and has been for a very long time. So, questioning love in a poem is also very inspiring and important. Our final reader of this evening is Sophia, who is only seven years old, who will be reading to us in Austrian German. Für die Kinder mit Krebs, Goldflecke sind gesunde Chips. Honig ist die Frucht von Bienen. Müsli ist Gott mit Rosinen. Tee ist Energie in Tassen. Dora ist Kinder mit Kla in Klassen. Semmel sind Sonnen zum Essen. Was Vitamine sind, habe ich vergessen. A very, very cute reading to end this evening's reading. And thank you, everyone, for joining us tonight. Um, Kai Shan and Josh, I'm not sure if you had any closing words you wanted to share. Sure, I just want to say thank you again so much for spending your time with us, sharing the language and culture, and we look forward to seeing you again next year, hopefully in person. Let's meet in Davis again. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone, for um, sharing with us um, this year. And like I said, we're hoping that you can join us in person next year. And a final round of applause again to our readers this evening. So thank you, everyone, for joining us. Uh, we hope that you take good care. And uh, next year, hopefully, we'll be in person. So on behalf of all of us, thank you again and take care. Finally, thank you again to Mike for helping us with the videos this evening. We really could not have done this without you. Very, very grateful, Mike. You're the best.